that was an awesome slow-mo shot. Remember to bring this along on your shoots because the drone got really low and really dusty taking that panning shot. And what's up fam, Rahim here. It is Tutorial Tuesday and welcome to the first episode of this video editing series. There's a lot to cover about how I do my video editing, like the choice of frame rates, color correction, color grading, uh, choice of music, and camera, drone camera angles and all that will be in future episodes. I'll put them all in a playlist. But right now, in this episode, I'm going to be sharing with you how um, to start you off. Like the last episode now, if you haven't watched it, it's right up here. We were just out testing the drone and of course, I there's some basics is that I don't want to just be flying the drone all over the place, right? I do want to take shots, but at the same time, I wanted to find a subject. So um, just to start you off, right? Uh, ideally, if you're going to go out there and fly, you should have some sort of subject. Now, for me, I wanted to control the subject per se, right? So um, I took up my big ass RC car, which was the Traxxas X-Max and got it going. It is huge. That's what she said. The car is about this big. I felt it was the perfect subject because it was big enough that the drone shouldn't have much problem tracing. Now, I could be the subject and run up all over the place, but <laughs> I'm not going to be doing that, right? Obviously, so um, the, the X-Max was perfect, right? By its size, by its speed, right? To really test out the capabilities of the drone. I couldn't really test the full capabilities simply because we only had one bet. Me and my co-pilot only had one bet. Oh, by the way, my buddy here is Chase Hasmi. He is also a fellow drone pilot and recently a bit into RC cars. So he's familiar with driving and also piloting. And that's why I, I had him along during the shoot. So I would say a bit of poor planning. The plan was to go out and shoot, but we did not have a structure to our story. In similar sense where what this episode is about is to help you along. Like if you know you've gone out there, you've taken some great shots, but you do not know where to start, right? This is a, an ultimately a basics of how to do video editing, right? Um, I'm going a bit deeper into using an editing program, but I'm very sure you can do similar things on mobile apps where everyone's creating content for social media. So it is possible to do it on the mobile. It's just that um, I'm showing you a more normal standard platform which is through a uh, uh, program which is I'm using the Final Cut Pro X on my MacBook. It is available only on Mac. Why choose this over Premiere Pro for example, right? Premiere Pro people say it's like the industrial standard and all that. But for me, it's what works for you. And what works for me is Final Cut Pro simply because about four to five years ago, I think, I paid one price and that was 499 USD or something like that, right? And I've been able to use it all the way ever since. Update after update, it just works. For me, this is the program that I want to use and will keep using for some time. Just a heads up, um, if you want Premiere Pro, it is a good program, but there is one thing about it that you can't buy it as a full program, right? It is a monthly subscription very good for those that are just giving it a try maybe you just want to try for one, one month then okay you like it okay then you carry on but it's a monthly subscription and i'm not keen on that i i'm happy with just paying one price and done and over okay that's a lot of blabbering for me but um just before we kick off the tutorial i just want to remind you that what you are going to be making is i consider art all right, don't, don't, don't think of it as content. Oh, I need to send out to all my socials. Think of it as art, your personal art. Art that you will love watching today and for the many years ahead. You shouldn't worry too much about others' opinion about your art because it's your art. It's what you see and the beauty of what you see in that. So anyways, this is coming from an art student, right? I studied art enough to have a say that at the end of the day, I feel that whatever I make, I appreciate people's opinions and feedback but nonetheless don't go hard on me because i wouldn't accept it this is my art and you need to understand that and so as a creative anything can be your canvas you probably may like painting maybe you like sculpture work uh, for me i just like video work and this is my canvas and here i am sharing with you the basics so that you can also get started on your own art okay so now we are in the final cut pro editing software um, right now in the center is a preview of whatever is in your timeline um, i'll guide you from the left to right a bit uh, just a bit of navigation guide um, so we have all our events here this one is my own personal events uh. so the recent one was the x max meets the mini 3 pro so this event i already created an event and within the event is then this project 
right? This is the project with the timeline that you see here. So by the way, uh, below here is called a timeline. So you may call the timeline as like the canvas itself, right? That's where you'll set your base. That's where you include all the uh, assets. Like for example, at, for a start, it's all your clips that you have taken. So on the right side is now the inspector where if I were to cho choose any specific clip, right? Um, that's where I can choose to make any color corrections, any cropping, any edit to it. At this corner is where I have my transitions and also my effects. So that was just a bit about Final Cut Pro. Now I'm going to bring you back to the event which was XMAX meets Mini 3. So the project is here. I'm going to create another project. I'll call it Mini 3 Best Shots. Just check the settings in the event. Um, I normally set my video to 4K. Now here's the thing you can set output as 4k even though your content is lesser than that okay that will be covered in a future episode now if you don't want to bother with all these fancy settings you can just use automatic settings remember that this is a basics video i just want you to get started making your own art now as for me besides 4k i also remember that the mini 3 did take shots that were um, set at 60 fps right specifically in this event it showed a 59.94 fps so i'm gonna set that as the frame rate okay so um on the ground that day there was actually some ad hoc plan of like okay let's just take some shots from the center the car going away on the left side of us and then coming back and then to the right of us okay something like that take as many shots as we could just remember that this is not film now you can just keep shooting as long as you have memory card space so we just kept shooting and we ended up with a lot of clips some were good some were bad some were just test shots but I'm not going to be making uh, 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 the whole video again, right? I'm just going to choose a few shots. If not, we'll be here the whole day. So scrubbing through the clip, I kind of like this overhead shot, but I know there is a better one. I'm going to choose 12 for this example and just drop it in the timeline, right? A bit too small. Let's stretch it. Okay, spacebar to play the clip. And okay, the slow rise of the drone we, while the car is doing donuts. And then suddenly there is a yaw of the drone, right? Um, I kind of don't like uh, mixing two types of movement in one, especially if it's a short clip, like, like five seconds, right? Unless it's a dynamic movement. But this is kind of like a controlled movement, so I have to choose either I want a rise or a yaw. Now, about camera movements of the drone, that one I'll cover in the future episode. So I kind of prefer at somewhere in this point, right? So shortcut for Final Cut Pro is going to be Command B to cut a clip. You can remove the rest of the clip. So all I have is this portion. I think that looks okay. And oh, there was a random change of speed of the yaw. Let's try that again. Okay. At the point of where the speed changes, that's where I want to remove also. Ah, somewhere about here. Again, control B, delete, and let's choose the next clip. Okay, so at this point is where I can move on. There is no real need for you to time exactly where the shot ends before your next scene because you can already start laying out all your favorite shots, right? I'll be just taking a while to choose a few shots that I'd like to put together for this tutorial. Okay, so now in the timeline, I have all my best shots from whatever I could gather from that day and I've rearranged them to so-called follow the storyline as I mentioned earlier. So I have here, okay, the, the maybe I'll just play it and I'll narrate as, I, as we go along. Okay, so we have here the car. All right, doing is donut from ground level, then another view from the top, and then goes on to the slide, followed by going away. And then in, I didn't have a shot of it making a U-turn, so now the, the car comes back, takes another slide, another angle of the slide, and it carries on uh, so-called so into the sunset, but I am now doing a follow shot. So it gets dynamic with a very superbly low shot, and... That's where after this is the drone making an, a U-turn and coming back towards us. And that's where it is in this part of the timeline, right? So for the sake of this video, I'm not going to drag this too long. So all this is going to be removed. By the way, all that you see in black are those that I have already selected as um, not going to be in the shot because they're repeated scenes. Okay, uh, let me just show you. Um, v to enable the clip so now it's no longer on blackout mode so there's already another view of follow another follow 
uh, front view, slides, and all that. You get the point. Because I don't need them anymore. For this tutorial, I'm going to remove all these other clips by highlighting all of them and delete. Okay, so let's work with this clip. Some shots were taken at low ground level with a DSLR. Now, I'm not going to use that in this tutorial simply because I'm going to keep focus on making use of the drone shots. So as you can see, as I'm scrubbing through um, these shots, right, some are of good daylight exposure while some are a bit darker. For example, like you see here, we have good exposure, then suddenly you have a very dark exposed video clip all right um, so it doesn't matter um, don't worry about it like for me you can choose to adjust individual clips right now but um, I prefer to rearrange them first simply because of how is my workflow for uh, using Final Cut Pro okay so uh, I already have my music which is the beach by Sonic Spark okay this is by Epidemic Sound which is a uh, um, online music audio and also effects um, audio effects um, platform for you to get all these audio assets right i'll talk about it in the later part of the episode okay so i'm just gonna select this and put it in my timeline what i'm gonna guide you now is how to follow the pace of the music all right if you do not have specific shots then it is actually best to follow the pace and like cut it at the transitions of the music okay so let's just play the audio with blank background Okay, this part okay hints of the start of the beat and then here is where uh, more different um, instruments come in to give a better pace right it gets faster a bit okay there's more you can hear the and the guitar coming in okay so now the the beat is rising and rising and drop okay so you get that feel right um, Okay, I don't need the whole starting portion. I just need the music when the beat drops. All right, so I'm just gonna cut it somewhere here just for this practice. All right, remove that. Um, I'm actually going to bring it back further back because I have this idea of putting a title at the start. So maybe I'll just put a blank space first, which is a solid black background. All right, just insert it somewhere here drag the music all the way here and let's hear when the music comes in you hear that drum roll and when the guitar comes in fully that's where the car will start doing its donuts all right so i'm just gonna let's expand this a bit it's so small all right so somewhere there okay i need to match that Okay, so when the car pushes off, that's where the music starts. There are shortcuts here to nudge the audio okay, to the left a bit, somewhere here. Alright, somewhere there. Hmm, that's alright. Okay, so kicks off alright. Transition looks okay, but I prefer a different point of time. Okay, so for example, maybe to put it simply, if you're not sure of when to transition, then just follow the beat of your music, alright? Okay, at this exact point is where I will transit. So I'll cut this and try to get a point of view, uh, in similar view from the other clip where it is close okay somewhere there okay so what's happening here is that um, from the low shot you get the car uh, going from the grass patch or back onto the gravel so the next scene is gonna be close to the grass patch back onto the gravel somewhere here would it transit good enough let's try Hmm. close enough I guess but uh, you do notice that okay the drone doesn't move that nice okay there is this there is this slow uh, slow yaw and then suddenly fast yaw okay so it doesn't matter okay we we work with what we have
Okay, at this juncture, I see sliding here, but I want it to transition to this slide. So I'm gonna cut it right here. Now you have two options if you're following along on um, using Final Cut Pro, you could just drag it till this point, or actually you could also just cut and delete. Same, same. Okay, let's see the transition. Smooth enough. I'll I'll take that. All right, let's work with that. Slides goes away. Smoke a bit. Drone goes through, attempting to follow. All right, and cut there. Now the the car has come back. I'm gonna get only a shot of the car uh, moving along, just a quick shot, and then change into a different scene already. Oh, transition wasn't nice. Okay, so I'm gonna cut it where the music beat changes. Oh, almost there. Should be somewhere here. Remove that. Alright. I want to keep it as is at the moment that the car surges forward. Okay, this portion. And it stays that way. It's going to transit to this smoky scene. But kind of want to be a bit more realistic. Somewhere here would be better, I guess. Because this scene is at the far outer side of the track. Now, this is closer to the center of the track. Uh, let's... Let's just take it somewhere here. Command B for cut. Remove and check. That transit was okay. Okay, just shorten this portion a bit. Nope, I mean this portion doesn't need to stretch all the way until here. So somewhere there. Okay, so far okay. Uh, I think closer to the track somewhere here and cut. Okay, follow scene, intense follow for a low shot. At this portion, the music changes. Here, the tune it. Uh, the chorus, eh, not the chorus, vocals come in. Okay, that could be leading into a different scene, but I'm just gonna end it right here. Uh, Alright, and just give it a black screen. Okay, let's check that out as a clip put together. Uh, I can I I'll probably just cut it out like okay somewhere here remove all this excess and let the music fade out now here is where I'll fade it out okay earlier I mentioned that I did not want to do the exposure changes yet. Okay, this is the point that I'll do that. And I'll be using something called adjustment layers. Here's an adjustment layer. It's basically uh, an additional layer on top of your original media. So I'll show you an example with one clip first. Huh? I want this as my main clip. So I don't need an adjustment layer here. Maybe this. This looks just a bit too dark. Okay, so I'll cut this shorter now the thing about adjustment layers is that let's say I make 
color corrections this is not color grading color corrections right so i have original clip here next clip is a bit dark so uh, maybe overall brighten it now you look at the scene it's kind of okay but the grass has become a bit faded right so i may want my i i see grass as around mid tones right not yet not shadows neither is it highlight so let me lower the mid tones a bit okay that darkens the grass area uh, area just a bit um i want to saturate the colors overall a bit more okay let's try maximum maximum gonna give that really punchy look but now the car is it looks too fake toyish like in a sense i don't know what how to describe it but yeah you don't want to punch the colors too much until it looks like in your face so i'm just gonna come on i'm just gonna lower the saturation that was just an example somewhere here okay cheer us a bit sometimes less is more let's compare colors wise okay okay i'm not gonna drag this too long so that's good for that's good adjustment for that now there is this scene which is just a bit too dark okay so i'm gonna copy this and make adjustments for this one okay so overall way too dark okay let's just brighten it um strengthen the shadows a bit okay lower this mid tones bring up the highlights uh, and bring up the yeah highlights Okay, does it look bright enough? Saturation is okay. Yeah, kind of okay. Now notice that at this portion, right, I can see that the sky is um, overexposed. Now you have no choice about that because my primary subject is here and I want it bright. So, okay, I'm going to live with it and just go for it. Okay, generally okay, okay. Colors are not far off. So why I use adjustment layers in case, instead of adjusting the clip in itself, right? You can go to the clip, right? And just make color adjustments from here. But I'm adding an additional layer and making the adjustments so that I can see the before and after. Okay, I can just switch on, switch off. Okay, now the adjustment layer is off. This was my original image. I want to see the changes I've made. Okay, on and off, easy. Uh, this generally okay uh, this dark similarly similarly dark to the previous one that i edited so i'm just gonna copy this throw it on top okay and adjust it according to the length that i need um bright enough yeah that's okay and i think this clip also could do some will need to be brighten uh, yeah will need to be brighter okay so just as a template uh, for the sake of moving along i'm just going to stretch this and brighten everything okay for this portion let's have uh, another another look at the clip Mm, okay that looks uh fairly even now of course you could spend more time to really fine tune that but i'm just gonna move along because now what i want to show you is um after i have my my clips in music has matched i already had adjustment layers to adjust the overall uh, brightness darkness of the image and then that's where i'll add in a final layer which is final adjustment layer this is the overarching layer which i will put on a lut now a lut is a lookup table whatever your clips the colors of your clips it's gonna give its own look to it so it depends maybe you want that cinematic kind of um, 
teal and orange or maybe you go for teal and pink now here's an example right the LUTs that I use are from uh, MLUT so I will need to take this uh, plugin throw it into the adjustment layer nothing happens yet I have to select the adjustment layer and that's where I go over to the inspector now because I have no LUT loaded in this is where I'll choose my custom LUT which is over in my movies yeah motion templates effects and i have my explorer pack so um generally let's just go with teal and orange right for a uh, initial look okay as you can see now the everything is really teal and orange um it's too punchy uh, the, the sky is blown out really blown out the shadows are crushed and yeah, everything just looks bad, bad so what you will do now is choose your kind of like i would choose my favorite scene okay a good mix is here right there's highlights um you have your mid tones and you have your shadows so i will now make adjustments now if i bring it to zero this is your original image and then this is where i will bring it up just ever so slightly to give it the look that i want 30 Oh, I can see the orange is really in there. Okay, blue is out also. Not that bad. Okay, so let's just settle it here for now, right? Um, links to where I get my MLUT presets and also where I use where I got the LUTs. Now I think I purchased these LUTs from. Um, Ryan Nangle but at the same time he does provide some free LUTs for you to give it a go okay at this point I will just wanna put a title to this which is okay something basic double click on that and say mini pre best shots and featuring X Max Okay, let's see how that pans out Okay, just for good measure, I'm just gonna put a Typical at The end Right, give it a final scrub And If you think the Clip, all the clips together are okay Right, your video is ready for exporting now this is where um for me you can notice that there are these dots at the top okay exactly where the cursor is now this tells me that the video will be low quality because it's unrendered yet right so what i need to do is actually send it to render because of all the overlays and then you'll be ready for export okay a quick render okay render done now we're gonna export this uh i'm gonna be choosing youtube and facebook settings i should have this at my standard setting of 4k everything else is all right now i'll just next and export it to my desktop right okay so now while the clip is exporting let me just quickly talk to you about epidemic sound now i've used epidemic sound for the longest time okay i didn't want to care about getting audio assets but ever since i experienced there was this one time i uploaded uh, an episode that it took me like four or five hours of editing only to be jammed by facebook because i was using copyright music so that's the reason why i got into using epidemic sound your best option for copyright free music and sound effects so use my link in the description to get your first month free all right videos done let's watch our project for today Okay, that was very amateurish, um, more could be done, but then again, this was a very basic outline, a very basic intro about video editing. Now, um, why do I even need to put this out and share with you guys? Simply because I believe many of you may need that little bit of push, right? Um, you may want to create videos 
for content or you just want to create videos for your own memories. Now, I was that person who had a lot of trouble forcing myself to get into it, right? Anybody can just whip out a camera and your camera phone and start making videos, but not everyone wants to do it. So I hope that with this basic Okay, a dump truck just came by and started doing some work. Let me just wrap it up that um, I hope it gets you started into video editing. Now, who knows? It may be something of your long-term interest, right? Just go for it. Just Or at least just make videos for your own memories, right? Create your own art. Okay, I'm just going to wrap it up. Now, if you've liked this video and you found it useful, do give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you are not already. Do click that notification bell so you'll be notified of a future episode, right? And... Leave me a comment. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Pilots, as always, I'll see you in the skies. Peace.